Hey, you know, a good weight shift will really help you maximize your power and your club head speed. But what will also help you do is help you locate your low point consistently, not only in front of the ball for all your iron strikes, but also consistently in the same spot so that you can get a lot more consistency with your strikes and your game. Right after this, let's talk about some of the major points of weight shift so you can really master yours. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I hope you get enough value out of this video so that you'll consider hitting like and subscribe. All right, let's talk about a few basic points that will help you get rid of that, either that flat-footed, no weight shift, or even worse, the, the, the fire and fall back method that's really keeping you being the shortest hitter in your group and also having a really hard time with either topping the ball, chunking the ball, not being very consistent with your strikes all over the face. These points are really gonna help. Let's start with this one first. In your backswing, a lot of people who end up with weight shift problems, they allow their weight to start rocking their right foot to the outside like this. And so the weight gets outside the center. And now from here, you've got nothing really to push off with and it ends up being much more difficult to get to the right spot on your feet with your downswing. So instead of allowing yourself to rock back, you want to take your thigh and you want to kind of feel like you're, you're twisting it in like, like this. Twist that leg in as you draw the club back and resist like this. I keep loading up into this thigh and feeling it really stretching as I resist and not allowing the weight to get to the outside of this foot. So I've made a, enough of a weight shift here, I can almost pick this leg up, but I have not allowed my foot to rock to the outside. So now I'm ready to spring down and around for extra power. Now number two, consider where most every good player that you see on TV gets to. Specifically, when they get out or just past impact, their weight is specifically on the outside of their left foot, predominant amount of weight, and towards the heel. Let's look at that from this angle. Notice that my foot is rolled outwards as all the weight has gotten outside the center of my foot. And I'm also got my toe up in the air a little bit as the weight is favoring the heel half of my foot. So you'll often see, look up some photos of your favorite players at impact and you're gonna see left feet or front feet that look kind of like this. So now how are we gonna get to that same spot? When, if we know this is the truth, well, what is the secret to getting there? And it's gonna be have everything to do with your center of mass. So what are you going to be doing with your belly button area, the center of your pelvis? It's going to be something like this. If I'm starting here in the center of my feet with my belly button, if I'm going to get to that magic spot, I'm going to have to shift this towards the target. Remember, we're going to try not to add a moving head into our weight shift. So this would be what we might call the Frankenstein walk. Now notice I am shifting my weight successfully from foot to foot, but I'm doing it sacrificing a steady head position. A no-no for sure for a lot of different reasons. So while trying to keep my chin and my nose in the center of my stance, in order to get to that magic outside heel position, I'm going to have to take my center of mass or my center of my pelvis and I'm going to have to shift it until it gets outside my foot. Now there's magic in this position. Here's my foot remember in that kind of rolled over and toe up position but now I'm actually I don't even need this leg anymore. I've got maximum brace here 
essentially I've shifted 100% of my body's mass on top of that spot outside of the left heel so much that I, I really don't even need that all while keeping my head back in the center so really what we've got to create here we've really got to create a a tilt of the spine to make sure the head stays back in the middle while we get to the left foot completely now once you can get there you're really set up for a good sling of the arms and wrists really knock the ball out there with quite a bit of speed now a lot of people they like to take the advice of people who are power hitters or top instructors and I think you're getting a bad piece of information here they say when you want to hit it longer that you should spread your feet wider let's say like this wide this is our quote power stance and here's the problem with that you'll have to do some really fancy complex footwork here to make this work but watch what happens if I'm wide I cannot shift look at this different foot position I can't get to the outside of my heel here I'm more on the inside of my heel and if I pick this leg up I fall back down on it again I can't move over enough to get to that one-legged balance and get my weight to the outside of the heel get almost see where the maximum distance is here if I start to tap dance yeah that's starting to be iffy right there start to fall backwards this is where you get to that that wide stance is gonna make you kind of at first try to move some pressure over but then you won't be able to sustain it and you'll end up falling back onto a two foot balance for sure or just being thrown back altogether so I want you to really pay attention that you're not getting yourself overly wide I like my heels under my hips it's a bit narrower than most people would tell you but this way I can quickly step over it's not about how far you shift it's about how quickly you can step down and turn that really produces the power so don't let your stance width get away from you so we talked about getting to this outside of the left heel as you're striking it or just after notice my body is also turned open as well now to give you a little bit more of a fluid dynamic feel you could start here and practice this statically just practice balancing in this position just to get start getting the feel of where you want to be at impact but let's add some fluidity to it now and I like to add a little sense of exaggeration you could do it by taking a step back and lifting this knee almost like a baseball pitcher so step and step and you come back to that same outside of the heel position at the end so it's kind of like hold it here and memorize little step and throw your leg up in the air and throw your knee behind the other knee like you're making a wind up like like Nolan Ryan used to do step over and down and finish the same way with this knee in front of the other knee you'll really it's an exaggeration in the drill sure you only might see somebody like a Kyle Berkshire or somebody on the long drive actually doing this and some of them have used it successfully but you're just trying to get this sense of weight shift from side to side in an over exaggerated way again finishing up with good footwork like this and then you might try to hit some golf balls using let's say a portion of that not quite repeating exactly that but repeating some of the feel another great drill for you all right let's see if I can demonstrate a good weight shift here notice my feet are not overly wide this is my power stance and let's see if I can make a good shift notice how I'm finished in balance I am in no threat I could stand here and actually walk down the fairway once I get here I'm in no danger of actually falling back a lot of people who are in a little bit of trouble 
look how I'm finishing now. I've rocked back onto my back foot with the majority of my weight, and I'm watching the shot land from this position. This also covers a great deal of golfers who struggle a little bit with contact and direction, even some power. This means I'm not quite getting all the way over. Remember that fall back like you could yell timber because the tree is about to fall back down again. It's essentially what you're doing in slow motion. So make sure you can sustain this nice balanced position until the ball lands. And then you can actually walk after it like Gary Player. So hey, I hope some of these tips help you kind of get away from that fire and fall back or flat-footed, no-legged swing that's keeping you from being your best. Really thank you for watching the video and supporting my channel. I hope you'll like and subscribe and help me get to 100,000 subscribers. That would mean a great deal to me. I'm Steve. Check out my website, hititlonger.com. And don't forget, if I don't see you in the next video, I hope I, I see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.